In this tutorial, we're going to cover the basic user interface and navigation of 3ds Max. So the first thing to know is how to navigate. So to navigate, um, if you want to orbit your scene, you um, select Alt and Middle Mouse button, and that'll allow you to rotate around your model. If you just hold down the Middle Mouse button, that'll allow you to pan around the model. If you hold down Control Alt and Middle Mouse button, you can zoom in and out slowly. If you want to zoom in and out in increments, you can use the scroll wheel in the middle mouse button. So Alt, middle mouse button allows you to orbit. Alt, middle mouse button, or just middle mouse button allows you to pan. And Alt, control allows you to zoom in and out. You can also find these tools um, on the bottom right corner of your screen. So zoom is the uh, upper left of this little tool kit. That allow you to zoom in and out. Um, you can also orbit with this button or walk around the model with this, but um, pretty much you want to get used to using your mouse so you can uh, model quickly. So that's the basic navigation. Uh, Max is set up as a series of drop-down menus. So on the top you have the file menu. This is how you open, save, import, export. Um, you can save as different file formats if you want to translate the model from uh, 3D Max to AutoCAD or uh, Rhino or a different program, for example. You can also import different models. Um, if you select import and hold on that, you can import um, non-native file formats. But you can also merge from one Max scene into another. So if I have another Max model and I want to put it into this Max model, I can just use the merge command. Um, then you have your edits. You can undo, redo, uh, delete, or copy objects. You can move, rotate, scale, and we'll cover these in a later tutorial. Um, you also have tools. You can group objects, different views. You can create all your objects here um, through the drop down. So, standard primitives like boxes and cones. Um, you can also create you know, rendering objects or any sort of object you can imagine, like cameras and lights. Um, and there's another way to access these tools as well. But if you want, you can do 2D geometry with shapes, lines, rectangles, circles. You can also add modifiers to objects. These are all your modifiers. Um, some of them work only on cameras, some only on lights, some work on the objects themselves. So um, anything that you want to access that modifies an object geometry would be here. I uh, have an animation toolkit, editors, rendering. This is where you do all your rendering settings and rendering. Um, and then you can customize your viewport if you'd like or your user interface. So if you go to customize uh, user interface, you can change different settings. Um, in your uh, in your scene, so you can change the shortcuts. Uh, you can change the toolbars, which are these. So if you want, want to add new icons up here, you can do that through this. You can also change colors of your scene, like your background color or any of the other colors. Um, also under customize is unit setup. It's very important that you're using units. So go to customize unit setup. You can change your units. By default, I think it's generic units, but you want to make sure you're working either in metric or U.S. standard, depending on what you're comfortable with. Um, you can also do max scripting, and then if you have any questions, you can look at the help. There are a lot of different ways to access help tools here. The next row down are the toolbars. So a lot of the commands you use will be located in the toolbars. Um, you can select objects by selecting this button. You can select by name. So if you have a particular object type, like lights or cameras, you can just select them here, or objects or lines. Um, a little further down are your move, rotate, and scale tools. So this allows you to move objects, rotate objects, and scale objects. You then have your snaps. So you can snap. If you select this and it's highlighted, that means your snap is on. If you right click, that'll allow you to change your snap settings. So you can choose ed edge points or end points or midpoints. A little further down, you have your layers uh, toolbar. So these are your different layers in your scene. Um, and then you can open your material editor or do other rendering things over here. And these are all standard or custom plugins that I've added. You then have your viewport. Uh, this is your viewport. So if you want to minimize, right now it's just one scene, but, uh, one screen. But if I hit this bottom right button, that'll minimize my viewport so I can open up these four different views. You can always change how these are oriented on your screen. Um, anyone that's outlined in yellow is active. If I have an active one selected and I maximize the viewport, it'll maximize whatever's selected. Um, in the upper left corner of the viewport are your settings, so I can always change it here. If I select front, I can change it to my different 
viewports. Um, these are the shortcuts here, which you can get used to using, but if I want to go back to perspective, I can just hit this one, and then I'm back in perspective view. Um, next is how it's viewing objects. So if I have an object, let's just create a box quickly. If I want to change that from wireframe to realistic, I can change it to realistic, or I can change it to shaded. Typically, I'll work with shaded and edged faces turned on. That'll allow me to show if I have any edged faces, I can see the different faces that are in my model. So that's shaded and edged faces. You can also change different settings of your viewport, which we'll cover later. Um, below the toolbars are your graphite modeling tools, and these are all tools that are specifically available for edit poly modeling. So these are only going to become active when you're working with edit polys or polygon modeling. Um, on the right is your command panel, and this is what you'll use for 90% of your time in modeling. So you have different tabs here. You have the first tab, which is create. So any object you create in Max will be located within this first tab. And then under that are subcategories. So you can create on the first one is your, your 3D geometry. So these are all your uh, boxes you know, or spheres, anything that's three-dimensional. Second one is shapes. So these are all your two-dimensional objects like lines or circles. Uh, then you have lights. So if you're going to create lights, you could do that here cameras, and then some helper objects like points, for example, or tape measures, so you can measure objects. And then you have some other things like dynamic objects and systems, which we won't cover. Within each of these uh, create menus, so in geometry, for example, you'll have a drop-down. Within that drop-down are all the different three-dimensional objects you can create. So you can see you can create standard primitives, extended primitives, which are just a little more complex, Compound objects, which involve one or more or two or more objects, so booleans, for example, would boolean uh, one object from another, um, and so on. You also have particle systems, doors, and a lot of other things here. Under your shapes, it's the same. You have a drop down with 2D objects. Um, if you're polygon modeling, you'll want to use splines. You can also uh, work in NURBS, but for most of Macs, you'll use spline objects. Um, and then lights, also there are different types of lights, cameras, different types of cameras. The uh, last thing you need to know is the right-click menu, which is your quad menu. Um, so this will allow you to access things like hiding objects or unhiding objects. So if I want to hide just this object, I can select this object. Remember, this is the selection tool here. So I can select this object, right-click, and I can hide the selected object. If I right-click, I can unhide all, which unhides every object. So that's a really useful way for navigating the scene. You can also access your move, rotate, and scale tools here. On the very bottom is your timeline. So if you're working in animation, this will be your timeline, which you can change the settings of. Um, you can also progress in the timeline by using these commands here. And then finally, you have your XYZ inputs down here. So if you want to ever, for example, move an object, um, you can either just move it uh, I'm going to turn off my snap so you can move it by just moving by uh, holding an arm on the gizmo or you can type in exact values down here. Um, if this is not selected, that means it's orienting the XYZ according to the 000 of the grid. But if this is selected, it'll move from wherever it's currently located, so for, from wherever that pivot is located. So you can toggle on and on, on and off that, uh, that command. The last thing is the zoom. If I hit Z, if I select an object and hit Z, That'll zoom to the currently selected object, which is really useful for moving very quickly around a scene. 